Well, for guys who had the San Antonio Spurs in the Western Conference Finals as a series play, you are elated for most of the gambling public, however, that definitely gave too much support to the Memphis Grizzlies because you were so over-impressed by the Grizzlies' performance against an injury-riddled Oklahoma City Thunder team in Round 2. You are definitely depressed today as the Spurs managed to take the 3 nothing lead in the best of seven series last night. But today it's all about Indiana and Miami and my thoughts on that contest coming up in just a moment. Plus free baseball selection coming your way as well. Let's get to your coupons as there are uh, three of them today. The first one will save you $35 off of any single purchase today. That's a one-time usage coupon. It's good whether you want to buy Craig Davis's 100 dime side play today on Game 3 of the Pacers Heat Series, or it's good if you wanted to buy a long-term package for any particular handicapper here at the site. The choice is yours, and that coupon code is simply SAVE35. SAVE35, S-A-V-E, and the number 35 will save you $35 off a single purchase. Also, going today, Brian Rosica. I think it's his first play in nearly two weeks, at least over 10 days. Brian Rosica today, what he calls the Holy Grail play, the Max Table Limits play. 100 dime winner, number 9 out of 13. Your Pacers heat side, it's the half price play of the day. $10 betters up. A little over $9,900 since his debut here at the site February 5th as he's gone 50 and 30 with his plays overall on that stretch. Again, half price play of the day, 100 dime winner number 9 out of 13. That coupon code is BR4250. BR4250. Again, yesterday, I gave you as the $5 play of the day an NBA total, and it was a winner. And props going out to Brad Wilton as he scored yesterday with that uh, total winner. I'm just looking here if I can find on the site what the hell the rating was. Was that play for Wilton? Uh, 60 dime play, which is uh, his second biggest NBA release of the season as he cashed in with the Spurs and the uh, Grizzlies going over the posted price. Well, today the five dollar play of the day is once going to be once again going to be an NBA total, but this time it's going to be courtesy of Brett Atkins, who is going for winning day number seven. Excuse me, number six out of seven today. He was one of the few handicappers here at the site to have a play on the Spurs yesterday, and it was a big one. It was his 89 winner number four in a row, and it matched his biggest NBA play of the season, and he had San Antonio yesterday. Today, Eastern Conference total of the year. Your Miami-Indiana over-under winner. $10 betters up $3,440 following Brett's advice over the past six days, and you can get that as the $5 play of the day and save uh, 50 of, uh, let's see, save $45 in the process by using coupon code BRETT5, his first name, B-R-E-T-T, -T, and the number 5. That'll save you $45 and get his play today. It's the $5 play of the day. Remember, at the outset of the to uh, postseason, I tried to impress upon you how betting totals can be just as lucrative as betting sides, and they don't discount your winning ticket when you go to cash it in because you bet the over-under and won as opposed to winning a side selection. So I've continually throughout the postseason giving you the plays of various handicappers with their total releases. This is the $5 play of the day release. Well, Jesus, it's hitting a little over 70%, so I would say it certainly has been successful. So those are your promos today. Uh, a couple other handicappers that I... Uh should mention to you, Brad, uh, Craig Davis, uh, not only going for winning day number 32 out of 49, uh, not only has $10 betters up over $4,200 in the playoffs so far, he has his biggest NBA release of the season, 100 dime winner number 16 out of 20. 16 out of 20 on your hate Pacers side. Uh, had a 100 dime winner, his most recent one with the Pacers over the Knicks. I think that was game six of the round two series. Had a 100 dime winner on the Grizzlies over the Thunder. Uh, back on May 11th, $10 betters up over uh, nine grand in all sports since November. Uh, anybody else? Oh, geez, Jeff Benton on a nice roll here, going for winning day number nine out of ten. 80 dime winner number three in a row on the Heat and Pacers. He's already a perfect 2 and 0 in the series with 80 dime winners on the Pacers in games one and two. Does he ride Indiana as the home dog today? $10 better, up nearly $3,200 the past nine days. Okay, guys, let's get to. Um, Let's talk about this Indiana-Miami contest here tonight. 
you know, you've got an Indiana team that is a two-point dog, maybe a one-and-a-half-point dog, depending on where you're looking at it, against a Miami team that most perceive as being in a must-win situation today. And really, can you blame that perception for anything other than being accurate? Because, listen, Indiana should really be up 2 nothing in this series. When you think that in the first two games played at home, Miami had never enjoyed more than a five-point lead in either one of those games, and now you're asking a Heat, the Heat, Despite being defending champions, forget about all that. The Heat to lay the two points at Indiana against a Pacers team that was simply dominant at home during the regular season. Uh, a Pacers team that is a perfect 6-0 and at home so far in the postseason with an average winning margin of 14 points a game. A Pacers team that just has so much versatility and so much depth. Uh, getting scorn from all possible sources. I mean, David West had the monster game in game number one. I think it was 26 points to go along with Paul George and Roy Hibbert. Well, then Hibbert in game number two uh, continues his offensive exploits here in the postseason when he comes up with a career-high 29 points uh, for postseason play and 10 rebounds in game number two as Chris Bosh simply can't do anything to stop Hibbert in this series. Uh, more impressive, something that I pointed out, that the difference between uh, game number one and going into game number two was I thought the Pacers needed more production from their backcourt, and they certainly got it, as uh, George Hill had 18 and Lance Stevenson had 10. So those two combining uh, for 28 points in game number two, uh, Indiana for the second straight game in the series, owned the boards as well. 39-32 uh, advantage on the boards in game number two after winning the rebounding battle by five boards in game number one. But, of course, we also have the fact that this is the Miami Heat. Uh, this is the defending champions. This is a team that has certainly delivered in these situations and clutched time, time after time in the postseason. Uh, this is a team that needs to get additional scoring from both Bosch and D. Wade. Let's face it, you know, LeBron James has 66 points so far in the first two games in this series. Those two have only combined for 67 points. The bench has been non-existent, inefficient. I mean, a three-point shooting. Granted, the Pacers have the number one three-point shooting defense in the NBA this season. Well, Jesus, Miami is shooting like a bunch of incompetent rookies. Problem is, it's guys like uh, Ray Allen, Shane Battier. There's a guy who should retire. Norris Cole, a combined two for 16 in the playoffs so far in this round from three-point land. So everything tells me that Indiana should be the play, but there's always that fear factor, knowing that LeBron has certainly carried this team and proven to be a postseason winner in clutch performance time over the past two years. So I think Indiana is to play today. I'm just telling you, again, it's not my play today because I'm betting baseball after winning again yesterday. Jesus, yesterday I win on a walk-off inside the park homer, you know times are good for me when I'm winning games like this. The night before I win, when a guy carries a no-hitter into the ninth inning, you know I'm hot in baseball. So I think Indiana is the play in this contest because despite all those things, nice things I said about the Miami Heat, it still comes back that I think Indiana simply has too much offensive firepower. And of course, the home court advantage counts for something. And remember, last year, this Pacers team was up 2-1 in the series and then allowed Miami to come back and take control. Of course, that's when they had the injuries, etc., with Danny Granger, and that's what caused them to lose this series. But this is an Indiana team that's playing with such confidence, and of course, they know as well as we know that they should have been up to nothing in this series. So I'm going to go with Indiana. Now, for your baseball free selection, and uh, yesterday I think I gave you another winning baseball play with the Boston Red Sox uh, delivering on the run line that was on the heels of the Cincinnati Reds on Friday. And of course, in baseball, listen, bottom line, guys, I'm personally today going. For baseball winner number 27 out of 35 with a uh, with my uh, best bet today. I'm going to go with the uh, Tigers on the run line against Minnesota uh, with Max Scherzer on the hill. I just took Scherzer in his last start, in fact, as a free play. When uh, he went to Cleveland, the Tigers had just dropped three out of four at Texas. The Indians had been red hot, winning like 18 out of 22 games. And he throttled them, giving up a first inning run and then at one point retiring 22 consecutive batters to win the contest. Well, I'm going to go with Scherzer, who is 4-0 in five home starts despite, despite a 5.85 earned run average, which shows you the type of offensive support the Tigers have given him, especially at Comerica Park this season. Um... As I said, he's coming off a one-run, eight-inning performance and a 5-1 win at Cleveland on uh, Tuesday night. Um, the Twins... 
Geez, what can I say about the Twins? Okay, they won yesterday's game 3-2. That's the most positive thing I can say about the Twins. Uh, prior to that, they had lost 10 consecutive games, okay? Prior to that loss, the Tigers had won four in a row and had scored 37 runs in their previous five games combined. They're still 15-8 and eight at home. Uh, Minnesota's going with Mike Pelfrey, 6.69 earned run average on the year, okay? Yes, he's going to be facing Detroit for the third time this season. Yes, in the first two starts, his combined ERA is 3.38. No, we are not betting Mike Pelfrey today. We are still going to bet the Tigers, right? <laughs> Minus the one and a half runs at home, making Detroit about a 115 more manageable home chalk in this one as your other free selection. Good luck, guys, and I'll catch you again on, uh, what is it, Monday, Memorial Day Monday. Talk to you then.